So it's task-based, and this is something that we carried forward from panel three. We wanted to make sure all your configurations in one place, and that's called the task file, which is just a side file, a configuration to the component, to the human task component. You have stage-based design, and what's even more, you have um, property-based config in terms of the parameters, in terms of the integration with the identity management. Very, very powerful. But what you likely didn't know is that the routing can be entirely dynamic. So most people are used to like defining stages, are used to defining patterns, and they might be sequential or parallel or a, um, a content-based part. But you can make this really dynamic now. We can do the whole approval chain based on Oracle business rules. So for really complex patterns where you might want to jump back and forward, that's something that you can hardly model in a static design. We figured we just integrate way better with Oracle business rules. The other part that you can do is routing based on data. I can do a dynamic follow-up of Oracle human tasks into an SDO-based service to get me data back and based on that, choose the stages I need to choose, right? Is my approval amount higher than 5,000? Go and collect that stuff, see if you need more approval or not. And what I want to uh, spend also a little bit of time on during this demo is actually what we call human workflow task events. So the events that you have seen in the previous slides, right, are used everywhere in the platform. A very common pattern that I have seen is I want to be able to subscribe to a task. You know, when a task happens, when something with a task happens, a task is assigned, a task is updated, a task is modified, all these pieces. And I want to have um, access to everything in a task. Possibly GitHub, but especially assignees, the last approver, and whatnot. So in order to make that work, we go back to uh, the composite here, and we drag a human task. My human task gets some data here. What we're going to do now is you see this events piece, and um, in Camel 3, what you could do is you implemented your own callback class and just plugged it in, and you have to implement everything in the backend, right? Now I say, you know what? Trigger me on the event with a sign, trigger me a generic human task event. And at that point, you just work with events as you're used to, out of mediator, out of people. And the event is a generic event, so we store it actually in a common repository where you can just pick it through, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And we come to sharing. <coughs> Another really interesting piece is this notion of service data data object support, SDOs. But you should know. Oh, sure. Uh, quick question about the event. Can you provide any guidance for each choose between using Oracle BPM and human workflow and So Oracle human workflow, right, is actually used off of our PPM 11G. Every approval that you do in BPM 11G is based on human tasks. That's part of our strategy. Yesterday and today, if you're interested, in fact, there is BPM 11G hands-on. So that's already the next generation that will ship uh, in the near future of the uh, version of the platforms. So we strategically said the UI of BPM is great, and also the concepts behind. In the long term, we want to go to have BPM actually one integrated part of the platform. And as part of that, um, we want to have two pieces that are reused, of course. And one is Oracle Human Task for approvals and everything else, as well as Oracle Business Rules, because it's already strongly integrated into a platform. So what do you use BPM for? For process modeling, based on BPM 2.0. And Oracle Human Task, you use for user interaction. Make sense? So we should avoid using XPIL? So we should avoid using the, the XPIL as Oh, XPDL. Yeah. So uh, the, today's XPDL, um, today's Oracle BPM engine, the Fuego engine we acquired from VA, is based on XPDL, right? And as long as you stay, and this is also my recommendation going forward, because strategic to Oracle, we, so we will support BPM and Tudor. Because that's the only viable model in terms of having a business view, having an executable view that is entirely based on standard. So if you want to use XPDL today, and that's totally fine. Just make sure you stay within the semantics that are also demanded by BPM, BPM and to the law. I rather not recommend that you put everything into XPDL. And you can put all sorts of stuff in there, right? I can have executable code and whatnot. In terms of moving forward to BPM 11G, I would definitely go into 
um, connecting to outside services that provide you that functionality. That will also make the, the upgrade much easier later on. Make sense? Good. Okay, back to service data objects. An interesting thing today is when you work with data in an SOA, is this notion I call a web service. You get the state back, and from that point on, you're, you're on your own. It's really disconnected data, right? I call a web service, the backend snapshots me the data, sends me a whole employee back. I work in my business process, and eventually the backend system, my web service, might just say, oh, someone also updated, and eventually, if I go as being a business process and update it back, I might just override my data. Really, really, really nasty. And also, another big problem is, XML is not a lightweight language. So the ratio you get from real data to metadata is actually quite big. You think about, we, everybody says you should have customer readable or standable tag names, right? So it's not gonna be ID5, it's gonna be customer name. So whatever it is, 10 characters, and customer ID being like two, 10. So you can think of the ratio, right? And there, whoever has already worked with XML, there are a couple of different parses, but at the end of the day, you always create some sort of memory tree. Even if you go stream-based and you really want to export into it and whatnot, you blow up your memory. It's DOM. And the SOA platform, we sit strategically on DOM as well, just make it convenient for you. So how would it be if you could actually call a service and say, I really only want to have the name and the address. I don't need all the other stuff. And also, when I go and update the service later, I really want to send you a delta. I don't want to send you my whole employee and the backend has to figure out what the difference is. And that's in a nutshell what SDO is about. It's a canonical representation of data and it's a clear separation of data from the data graph itself, a hierarchy of elements, a hierarchy of types, plus what we call a change summary that records every change. If you update an employee name, if you update, uh, if you create a new address, you'll get only the change summary possible. And naturally, only the change summary will walk back and be updated 